Roger, Less Than Jay, one of the most legendary bands on the ska punk scene. Oh, well, thank you for saying that. I appreciate that. How is it going? It's going fantastic. Uh, we're about halfway through the tour. Been having a great time. No major injuries or uh, diseases acquired or anything like that. So, so far, so good. I was going to say, it's been pretty hectic tour. You've played some pretty big cities. And I was going to ask, how's the partying been? Um, it's been, you know, a little mild on my side of the stage, but uh, there's been some partying going on. Um, we're touring with Real Big Fish and Zebra Head, and we know, have known those guys and know those guys for a long time and have had many party nights with them. So it's been a fantastic tour, man. I can't complain at all. It's been, uh, I probably won't remember most of it, but it's been pretty good. So I want to talk about uh, the new album, well, end of last year. Uh, for me, see the light sort of it's a, sort of a collection of all the best sounds that make less than jake like i'm not saying it's the greatest hits but it's sort of a collection of everything that's been so far uh, was that sort of something you had in mind when it came to writing and, pro and the production and all that i mean a little bit i mean we wanted to make a great less than jake record and um we kind of knew that we would be pulling we would have to kind of pull different styles because you know, Listen Jake does different stuff. We do the slow reggae thing. We do the faster punk rock. We do kind of the straight up sort of pop rock kind of thing. I don't know. So we knew that we had to have a little bit of a different flavors from all the stuff that we've done over the years. So um, the record was a lot of fun to make. Uh, we definitely had an idea in mind that it, we wanted the songs to be cohesive and work together and have some sort of a common thread. Um, and it's sort of like a lyrical common thread. And to me, you know, it really feels like the songs uh, complement each other, and it's a fun listen. So, it was definitely it was different for me being the full-on producer on this record, and there was no one else involved in this record except for the five guys in the band and our sound guy. You know what I mean? So it was a it was very much an organic, um, kind of from the heart sort of writing process. What was it like, sort of having that freedom, like producing it yourself? Well, it, you know, honestly, it's it feels good. It's it's not an uncommon f feeling for me. The last, you know, few Lesson Jake things, I've been super involved in GNV FLA. You know, I, I was really involved with a lot of the production on that, and those EPs that we did and the TV EP were kind of a sort of warm up recordings in a way to uh, kind of experiment in my studio and kind of not having anyone else involved. So See the Light was kind of the first, uh, okay, we kind of know what we're doing, we kind of know what we can get sound-wise, and we know what we're going for, so now let's like make a full record. And you know, Definitely took our time with the songwriting side of that and didn't stay in the studio recording for very, very long. It was only like you know three weeks or so which seems like a lot, but really isn't. And you could spend months, you know, months and months working on a song. So I didn't want it to make it like too perfect and, you know, too clean. I wanted to have some time compression on there. So you kind of feel that energy get into the tracks of that anticipation of getting done, you know? So yeah, man, it was, it was awesome. I mean, I, I'm completely looking forward to anything else that we get to record at my studio. It was a lot of fun. Now, I don't really want to sort of make you feel too old right now, but Less Than Jake started back in 92. This is, that's what I heard. I think that's a misprint. I think it's it? 2002, but it's, we could just say 92 for the interview. That's so I was going to say, like, that's sort of like, literally, I've grown up with a band. That's as old as I am. Yeah, that's, so that's awesome. Being together for that long as a band, so what sort of relationship do you build up over the tours and the recording and the writing? Uh, well, we just hate each other. We just fight. We only speak through text messages and that kind of thing. No, man, it's, <laughs> at this point in the game, you know, we're going on 22 years together as, you know, the four, four of us, and JR has been in the band now 15 years, so we know each other very well. We kind of know what's going to set people off, and it's like a brotherhood that uh, has some mutual respect going on with the music as well, so Blessing Jake's a great band to be in. We, we get along. We talk shit on each other. We talk shit to each other. We joke around about everything. There's nothing that's sort of, like, off-limits to talk about, you know, like... You know, whatever roadies and that kind of thing, any kind of insanity that goes on the tour, we can make fun of them. We can talk about it. We'd be like, "Dude, I can't believe you kissed that that girl or whatever. She was ugly, whatever." You know, like it doesn't matter. Like every, every, there's nothing off limits, so it's good. It's fun. And so, well, before I move on to the tweets, um, the one thing that I wanted to ask was: so, sort of, out of all those years together, if you could pick one sort of defining record in that time, sort of define Less Than Jake for you so far, uh, what would that be? 
Yeah, well, honestly, the last, um, the time that we spent last year writing and recording See the Light was, it was really good for us. I felt like we were, like, bonding very well, and we were working on songs well together, and everyone kind of had this equal vision of what we wanted it to be like. So that was, it was really great. It was great. And if I had to flash back a bit, I would say, you know, when we were doing Anthem, that was a pinnacle moment for the band. You know, we were ahead of this in incredible major label budget. We recorded at this mansion in Malibu with a view of the ocean next door to Cher's house, you know, it was this huge place that all these amazing records had been made at. And, you know, we had a great producer and we were learning a lot. And that was, we were all living in that house together and kind of squashed in there and working on the songs. And we were doing the B's for B-Sides record at the same time. So over that like six weeks, we had these like 30 something songs that we were just, that's all we were thinking about. And it was a, uh, it was a lot of partying going on, a lot of good times, but it was, it was there was a lot of learning and a lot of like, okay, this is what Lesson Jake's supposed to sound like when we were doing that record. A lot of that was happening, so that was a great time. That was awesome. <laughs> knows what's going on. It's not. Well, yeah, he's, he's basically, he said, ska punk for him is like his favorite kind of music. And it always will be. Um, but he wants to know, sort of, from you, where do you see the genre going in the future? Um, it's weird for me because I, I've kind of tried to stay away from the staple of like the genre and the label and the whole thing. Yeah. Um, you know, we play punk rock. We have ska elements in our music. We love using horns for melodies and horns as you know the secondary instrument. I don't. I guess that is a genre. You know, but it's uh, as a musician, it's hard to like define that and be like, oh, well, that's all we do is ska punk. That's it's, it's a closed thing. It's not true. We do we do songs like Rest of My Life. That's a completely different side. We do songs like Last One Out of Liberty City. That is just fast punk rock. There's no ska in it at all. You know, I mean, to to me. Yeah. Um. So I think there's some of the younger bands that are using horns as extra voices and writing songs with clean guitar that you want to call that ska. Cool. The stuff that I've seen, there's some good bands out there. There's some like good ideas, and it's sort of becoming fused with a little bit more of like this metal-y kind of like vibe, as opposed to kind of a regular rock kind of thing. So, I don't know. Who knows, man? I mean, I have no idea. Music can can go in any shape and form. It can morph and you know mutate into so many different things. That that's the cool thing. You don't don't really know what somebody is coming up with at their in their parents garage right now you know I have no idea